This video is about something super important that every Christian is called to do, but some of us rarely do it. And uh, let's talk about it. Forgiveness. Let's go. Whenever you are asked to forgive somebody, what do we always say? Oh, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. Oh, I'll forgive you, but I'm never going to forget. All right, well, that's just, I, I don't want to use this as a cop-out or an excuse, but we are, we're humans, and we do remember things, and we're like, man, I can't really trust you, and that's okay, because sometimes like, we only have like a limited time here on this earth, so you can't be surrounding yourself with people that hurt you all the time. You know, but then you also can't just be like remembering and dwelling about it all the time. Like, oh yeah, I remember that guy hurt me so much. Okay, it's 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 one thing to understand what happened and then to learn from that, and it's another thing to sit there and dwell in it and to let it happen over and over and over and over and over again to yourself. There's a really good saying. It's it's not in the Bible, but it says, um, um, "Holding on to bitterness or resentment, like holding on to unforgiveness." is like you drinking poison, expecting the other person to die. I can remember me being a little guy in high school, junior high, mad at somebody, like, man, I hate that dude, man. I hate that guy. Gosh. And I just couldn't wait for that person to be, I hope, man, I'm going to this party. I mean, I hope he's there. Oh, or whatever. And then at the whole party, the whole time I'm there, I'm looking around, and I can't find him. And I'm not even enjoying the time with the boys or in time with the girls. I'm just, I'm mad the whole time. Like, I didn't even enjoy it. And by the time the oh, party's over, yeah, he didn't show up. Man, I, I was, I'm more worried about the guy than I was about my own life. How stupid is that? And that's because I had, I, I had heart issues, right? I wasn't even, ah, well, Lord, I wasn't trying to live for you, Father. But anyways, that's what it's like. Like, you're going to waste your time dwelling on something about somebody else that they're not even worried about. Like, I am sure that I have hurt so many people. Like, I, I hurt people's feelings. I hurt them emotionally, hurt them physically, hurt them mentally. I did so, I was a jerk. And man, Father, I just want to apologize to anybody that I ever hurt. If you're ever watching this video or know someone that might have hurt, hey, this is me. I am so sorry. I was an idiot. I wish I could just somehow make everything right. But all I know is God changed you, man. I'm not who I was. I am definitely not who I was. And I just want to apologize. I'm so ashamed and embarrassed to even have a part that I even did that stuff. And so, I'm sorry. I love you, Lord. I, and I, I am so sorry, people, whoever you are, man. I'm, not that I'm downplaying it, but I am so, I might not even remember it. And you might be hanging on to it saying, man, this freaking guy, he's such a jerk to me. I, am, I, I was, and I am so sorry, but I don't even remember it, to be honest. I'm so sorry. All right, which brings us to our next point. So, forgiveness. What does the word forgiveness mean? All right, to forgive. All right, forgiving. For. For means to happen before, like... Oh, um, he's, in a, he's the forerunner. He runs before this or whatever, like to the forefront, the forethought. All right. So the word for means before and then giveness or giving is to give. So we are to give the forgiveness before the error happens, before the mistake happens, before the entanglements happen. You give it before. How do you give it before? You give it before because it was given to you before. What are you talking about? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean it was given to me before? I'm talking to believers. I'm not even talking to people in the world. All right, people in the world, if you have a hard time forgiving people, it's only natural. Why? Because you haven't been forgiven. Like, you think that you're better than others. And it's okay. I thought that too. I thought, well, I'm not as much of a jerk as he is to that person. So, shoot, I'm better than he is. Because he's over here worse to more people. So shoot. Ugh, he needs to say sorry to me. I, whatever I did to him is not even close to what he did wrong to me way more times and way worse than I did to him. So now nah, if anybody needs to apologize, he needs to apologize. It's because God hasn't opened your eyes yet to let you know how bad you are in God's sight. All right, you're still looking at other people instead of, hey, looking up to God. When you do that, oh, forgiveness is so easy. Now, Christian brothers and sisters, if you are holding on to unforgiveness, if you are not forgiving somebody for a fault that they did, now when I say forgive, I mean just let it go. Leave it alone. Let it go. Don't even bring it up again. I mean, let them, free them. 
Not even free them. Like I'm saying free them from you, but it's really you freeing yourself from you. You are a prisoner. You change yourself up. They're not worried about it. Man, I really don't want to go to Thanksgiving this year because, man, she, he's going to be there. She's going to be there. And let them say something. They're going to say something. And, mm, Lord, I don't know. You're already building it up and causing the fight in your head. And yet nothing's even happened yet. You don't even know that person's even going to be there. They might be there and not even say anything. You're just waiting there. Say something. Oh, what are you going to say about this macaroni? It wasn't good. Oh, the chicken salad's not good. Oh, the turkey's dry. Say something. Oh, like you said last time. Uh, and you're ruining your whole time. You're not even enjoying the moment. You're not even enjoying the loved ones that God blessed you with because you're worried about that one. So unforgiveness, you are a prisoner of yourself. So free yourself. Forgive the person. Ah, why? Because God has forgiven you of all of your sins. Did he not? He did. And, well, I mean, that's different. How is it different? How is it different? Did you do that person wrong at any time? Maybe you said a bad word. Maybe you thought something negative about that person. Yeah, you did. What? God has never thought a negative thought about you. He never said anything negative to you. He didn't do anything negative to you. But you did tons of negative things to God. When you were denying God, you didn't even know God. You refused God. You rejected God. And God, when, when you, even when you came to Christ, it wasn't even you coming to Christ. God removed the veil. That way he, can, you could, he, could, he would allow you to come to your senses to come and be restored to God. So you, we didn't do anything. So if anybody needs to be unforgiving, it's God. God should be the one that unforgives us because he, he hasn't done anything to us wrong. We're the ones sinning against him and hurting him. But he forgives us. How can we as people hold a grudge against somebody else? There's a parable about that in the Bible. I'll do a separate video about that because I love it. It's a great story. So how can we hang on to unforgiveness? Now, when God gives us an example of how to pray, right? So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. The kingdom come that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, very important part there. It says, um, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Forgive us our mess ups. The same way that we forgive those who mess up with us. Forgive us the way that we forgive. That's Jesus' prayer. That's how we are supposed to. That was his model, his exemplar for us to pray. Lord, forgive me the same way that I'm forgiving them. But you haven't forgiven him. So you want God to not forgive you? That's what it sounds like. You're, no, 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 no. Well, it's good. Ah, Jesus said it. Don't get mad at me. and Don't shoot the messenger, bro. I'm just telling you. I'm reminding you about that scripture. Well, if, well, pray. Forgive him all the way. The same way you want God to forgive you. And the, how does God forgive? Well, the scripture in Micah, it says that God will cast our sins into the sea. The Jewish writers would, would use the sea, anything that was cast into the sea, as something that was disgusting, detestable, an abomination before God, just something that was gross, full of just, it's useless. Throw it into the sea. So you, remember the thing about the parable with the pigs, those 3,000 pigs that ran themselves into the sea? All right, the Bible says in Micah that, hey, God will take our sins and cast them into the sea. In Isaiah, he says, he will throw all the sins of Israel into the sea which means God will throw them into the sea where they are useless now. He will never ever think of them. And it says even, not even just into the sea, into the depths of the sea where they are irrecoverable. You can't find, it's deep in there, bro. I'm not gonna go back down there and get it. God throws it into the sea where he remembers them not, they're gone, that's it, it's over. That's how God forgives. That's how we need to forgive. I forgive you, bro. When, when the Bible talks about love, it says love is patient, love is kind, love is all these things, right? Another thing it says, love does not keep it a record of wrongdoings. Love doesn't even know when it's being offended. It doesn't even take offense to things. That's the kind of, yeah, that, that's the kind of forgiveness you have to have. To where it doesn't even, wow, I didn't even notice that that guy even said anything mean to me. Yeah, you might be thought of as soft or meek or whatever, but oh, I didn't know they even said that. I didn't even feel that. That was to me? That's how, that's the freedom you should be walking in, man. The Bible says that, you know, the, the truth shall set you free. The truth in Christ, that all the truths that you learn in Christ set us free from this world. It'll set you free from all the things that people say. Oh, what? That was a shot at me? They're throwing shade at me? Man, I didn't even feel that. Thank you, Father. You're so good, God. So, moral of the story, bottom line of this video is forgive. Give that forgiveness before the wrong is even done to you. How? By preparing your heart. How is your heart prepared? Because you remember what God did for you. How God already made a way for you to go back to Him 
before your sins even happen. God forgives you for the sins that you've already done, the sins that you did, and the sins that you're going to do in the future. Now, well, I'm never going to sin again, Lord. No, no, no. You just lied because you're going to sin again. And God already forgave you for it. The blood of Jesus atones for all the sins, all the sins you'll ever do. It's enough for it. And the best, and, and when you get tossed into the sea, when God throws those things into the sea, your sins, your old things, your old lifestyle, oh, thank you, Father, for that, because that won't ever come back. It'll be in the depths of the sea where we can't even go get it. And the best sea to be in is the sea of the blood of the Lamb. Oh, Lord, because that sea just washed us. Oh, Father, your sea of Christ's blood. Thank you for that. And so, well, Lord, we love you, Lord. Help us to forgive the way that you forgive, Father, to where we don't even remember it. We don't see a wrong when it's being done to us. And we ask that you would give us the strength and the courage and the wisdom and the heart to choose to forgive before the wrong is done. So when your spouse messes up, when they leave the socks on the floor, when they don't close the drawers, when they leave the pantries open, when they leave the dishes out, the counter's a mess, and you're just starting your day, I was trying to have a good morning, but I can't because i got to clean up your stuff. Hey, you're already forgiven. Hey, it's all good. Thank you, Father, for my spouse. The Bible says we're supposed to be thankful in all situations, no matter the circumstance. Right? Big or small, no matter the circumstance, always be thanks to give thanks to God. Why? That's the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. So give thanks in everything. Give forgiveness. Already make a decision in your heart to not hang on to any wrongs that are done to you. You will be so much better. Put that poison down, bro. That person's not being affected by you not unforgiving. It's you. You're blocking God. The Bible even says when you're praying and, oh, you remember that you, uh, you, uh, you have a grudge against somebody, you're holding on to resentment, go fix that first and then come back and pray otherwise your prayers aren't even going to be heard by God so that's how important forgiveness is super important Christian life 101 all right make that a strength in your life know how to forgive and not hang on to it because God doesn't do it do it the way God does it father father that you would give us a strength that as you forgive us our trespasses you would strengthen us to be able to forgive those who trespass against us we love you, Lord. Thank you for a great day. Let's go get them, Father. Let's go make your name famous and go make you known in the world, Lord, because you're everything. Let's go get them, for real, for real. Thank you, Father. It's our honor. All your sons, all your daughters give you praise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.